All right, since we're uh, kill man shy, we're just going to do a, a quick hitter thing that we're going to kind of fly by the seat of the pants here to kind of make happen. Um, so after traveling for another day, because you guys are about a day and a half away from um, the Bella's estate, you guys come across a like little war camp um, and Mente immediately she feels at ease because this is actually um, people that are loyal to her family as well as members of her family and are occupying this camp so Sir Roger is actually going to be her father which I have not named yet so because I was not expecting to have you guys meet them this early so Sir Roger um, is playing her father. So you come across him, and as you guys meet, he's accompanied by his son. Use Aaron. That, that's that's good. That's a good name. His son Aaron, and um, hell, we'll go with Sir Roger too. Why not? So Sir Roger and Aaron which is her father and her brother are at this camp um, set up and she is surprised to see them but happy because they weren't supposed to be here. Um, it was, the camp was supposed to be ran by the captain of their guard. Um, Thomas is the captain of their guard and he was supposed to be the one running this camp but you don't see him anywhere. And so what we're going to have for the story purpose, because we're missing people, is he met up with you guys on the road and took um, your other two people on a little side side mission for um, some supplies. So Eric says he's happy to see you, see you, or Aaron says he's happy to see you guys here. And there's actually a little matter they'd like to handle before... Uh, you guys move in to uh, take back Bella's estates. You guys immediately notice that Aaron is kind of slightly disfigured. Um, he's hunched over, leaning on a stick. So, um, and he's just, you can tell that he's not a very able-bodied person. Um, and then Sir Roger is an elderly gentleman in his late 40s, early 50s, um, that you could tell has seen and been through a lot, but is also not the most physical specimen. He's uh, looking very sickly, pale skin, sweaty, and it immediately is evident to you guys that because of their statures, this is why Mente is leading your guys' party and not them. Right, um, she's obviously the, mo the most able-bodied of this family you guys have seen. And so, with that, um, they said along the path to the town um, at the mill, the greater mill that services the area, has been. Um, it's got something happening there. They're not quite sure what it is. All they know is that the townsfolk um, won't, won't go near it and they're just as afraid of the mill as they are of the city of the town um, which you guys find out has been taken over by um, a group of zo a bunch of zombies that the, that the witch from um, hold on, I had that written down I'll give you a second. I had the name of the realm written down, and I another encounter. So just give me a second so I can tell you guys. It's called. I don't think I touched on that with you guys before, right? Uh, Yularvin. So the witch from Yularvin that was sent by King Eckerd. Um, has done something to townsfolk 
and so therefore they're you know they're they seem like the Walking Dead. You know that they're, they're their zombies have taken over this uh, taken over the town, and there's a a big monster inside the town as well. So, but they would like you guys to clear out this um, the mill and um, Sir, what is his name? Sir Roger explains that the mill also used to work as um, a makeshift armory of sorts for uh, their guard when they were going on patrols. They would stash weapons and things there for them to use to resupply. And he tells you that anything you find, you're welcome to keep. Um, if it could be of use, you can take you can take whatever you, you can find of use there. Um, and it's, it's your guys to have as a token for helping clear out this the mill, which they're going to need to get running if they want to claim their lands. I'm going to ask Sir Roger and Eric if they're in need of any healing before we take off. Um, they both say no. They've already been seen by the best, the best healer, best healers in Hiss, and there's nothing for their conditions that can be done. Okay. Sir Roger's an old, sickly man, and. Aaron is just disfigured from whatever happened caused him to be disfigured. I'm going to need you to point me in the right direction to a zombie that will heal my friend. Yep. Let's do that. They cannot be reborn unless they die. You want to go fight the zombies right now? I want to go clear out this mill. Rather than the mill? Uh, they don't know what is in the mill. They're not sure. They just know that the that the townsfolk are scared of it. The faster we clean up the mill, the faster I can give these people the rebirth they deserve. Yeah. So yeah, so the mill is going to be just down the road. Um. And let's see where you guys can actually see the mill. So I'm going to ask Sir Rogers if we can't save the mill, what does he want us to do with the mill? Um, we need the mill saved. It, no. it, if, it, if it doesn't get saved, then it doesn't get saved, but... I mean, we kind of need the mill because that's a big source of trade for the region. Okay. So, don't blow the mill up. Do yeah. Not, yeah, yeah, we don't want to blow the mill up. We definitely don't want the. We do not. I'm packing in the alchemist fire out of my bag and leaving it here. Yeah, no, we don't want that happen. Big boom somewhere else. Head that way. Um, before we leave, I'm gonna use my. B <sighs> I'm gonna cast blessing of the forge on my armor. Okay. Actually, no, I'm gonna cast blessing of the forge on my war hammer. Plus one to hit and plus one to damage. Okay. Question, Ben. Yes. Is using unarmed strike, right? The monk? Yes, monk, you're punching unarmed, right? 
Are you using a weapon? Well, I'm not a monk. That would be, um, Mr. Uh, Biblical. That's the monk. Ben, are you unarmed? Do you already use a weapon? Mente? Mente uses a weapon. She's sword and board. Not Mente. Um, Ganjin. Or, yeah. Unarmed. Um, question. Can I use, for you, mine, can I use the bless on his hands? Considered, is it considered a non-magical weapon? Um, his hands aren't a weapon. If he had, like, brass knuckles, you could use it on that. But hands aren't a weapon. Hands are his hands. And I will ask uh, Ryan to see his... You backstab with scimitar, right? I have oh. a rapier. Rapier. I'm going to cast Bless before we leave on your rapier. You get a plus one to your attack. Attack rolls and damage rolls for an hour. So, I presume the, the road's the pathway? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Any other houses we can see along the way or just... No, it's by itself. So this is just open. We're just going down the road. Yep, you're just going down the road. I'm just kind of trying to look up what these things look like that I'm going to have you guys fight so I can explain them. Oh, great. That, that is perfect. <coughs> is she coming with Mente coming with us or chilling? Yeah, she's coming with you guys. She on her horse or no? No, she's going foot. Okay, good. So I'll at least put her up here. Somewhere. She's going foot because you guys are going to go inside the mill. So. Tell us when, tell us when to stop moving. Or are we? I mean, you, you, we're going to go to the mill. Um, so we're so, to the mill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to go into the mill. And then we're, I'm, I'm going to find another. Hold on. There, there's another board that I'm going to use. Wow. Okay. So. I just wanted to make sure. That's why we're all moving it. Pace. Yeah. Yeah, making sure they have where we roll perception or anything. Yeah, no, no. Uh, you're going to roll. Um, we're going to go ahead and roll initiative when we get in there. Um, but just give me one second because I want to make. I'm not trying to make this thing too hard, but like. I'm also not trying to make it. Yeah, it's horrible. A cakewalk, right? Like. So, I was looking and I originally had made it a little bit too hard, so we're not going to do that. Uh, that's good right there. That's good. All the players are off the board. Okay. Oh, you have them all off the board? Yep. Okay, so we're going to go inside the little house, which is the mill. So let me see if I can find it. He's not off. Oh. I didn't see her. <laughs> Where I go? One of these was inside the interior house. It's in this one. What is this one? Just give me one second. Find the right. Oops. 
So we're gonna use this one. But we're only gonna use, no, we're not gonna use that one. I don't like that one. Let's just use this. How's that? Okay, so this is the entrance over here. Um, this is not a statue. <clears throat> this is like where the millwork grinder is. Okay. This is the entrance right here. Yeah, this is the entrance right here. And uh, it's we're gonna be bigger, so we're gonna actually be one, two. Six. Um. Yeah, so we're going to make, make yourselves bigger because we're going to make it so one of these blocks this is about right size. So we're all going to be big. Sure. Yeah, because because it's gonna be one of these blocks is gonna be five feet. So um, we can figure out how we want to. How do you guys want to enter? Me in front, or men, front. Mente in front with someone else? I'll I'll take the front spot. So you're gonna be up front with me, and the monk and the rogue behind us. Okay, so <clears throat> coming in here, um, why don't you guys all roll a first roll perception and then roll initiative. Five for perception. Okay. <laughs> Seven for initiative. Okay. Nine. So twenty one for you, Mo. Yep. Eleven and twenty for you. So this is a net twenty one initiative. I felt I just kidding. <laughs> what what was you at for initiative, Murnak? You said seven? Myself in the front because I'm going last. I need to be every one foot ahead of everybody. And then I need to roll for. All right, so um, when you come in here, you see you see three <clears throat> grotesque creatures that look like a ball with tentacles coming out of them, but and their mouths and just they have huge mouths, um, and they seem to be hanging out with another. Um, grotesque creature that has spines growing out of his back that looks super sharp. 
And so, um, they don't notice you at first because they're kind of focused on the, um, on the, uh, what's it, whatever that thing's called they're facing. The millstone? Yeah, that's it. So hold on one second. I just got to try to find this creature or something that okay, just symbolize these creatures. Hold on, all 423 creatures are loading that are in this thing. <laughs> <coughs> and then, uh, I found the first one. You're at 52% right now. Yeah. Just so you guys know, if we get into melee combat, I'll try to set everything we up we fight up into into a flanking position for us. Because every time I hit them, I can move them five feet. Or Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Wish it did. If that's what I'm asking. Or is it sitting there? It is sitting there. Yeah, it's sitting there. Cat box is on. All right, so we're gonna go ahead. The sentinels, the next feed I'm taking. Put them out here. Yeah, the sentinels full on max load them right now. I could shoot it out. I probably could. Made him too big. They're kind of just hanging out over here. shoots one of the arrows at the noisy cricket. That's why I don't want to see the monk do to one of these things. Turn it into a pile of goo. Alright, so Our bows are cool looking. Looking at the ceiling. Um, I mean, they have multiple eyes on their body. They're kind of just disgusting. <laughs> they 
have three eyes, so I don't know uh, if you can see, but it's got two eyes here and one eye there. So I'm actually going to rotate them because I'm kind of looking this direction. Yeah, that's good. So first is uh, physical, then mo, then mente, and then other things get turns. So yes, yeah, so you can go 5, 10, 15, 20. I don't know how far you're trying to go. Oh, and then, let's see. There's 40. <laughs> Seventeen on him. One DB one. So yeah, seventeen to hit. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, that hits. How much? Four. Four? Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to hit him with a flurry of blows. Sixteen. Sixteen to hit. Okay. Uh, give me one. Six. Yeah, sixteen hits. Nine damage. Yep. So the first one is how much? Six. Six nine. Yeah. So, so fifteen. Okay. So. points that's a nice nice shot on round one all right 15 points 15 points all right so it makes a grotesque sound and kind of spits and spews and then uh, yeah. turns and looks at you all through its eyes And now it is, uh, now it's Mo's turn. Okay. Don't you? I thought you had a crossbow. You did have a crossbow. I just forgot to add that. Yeah. Yeah, you got a you got a, a light crossbow from the uh, bandits. Yeah. I'll say, don't throw your dagger because you lose it here.
think crossbow has 80 foot range right This is it's not a big building. Is it light or hand crossbow? A light crossbow. It's a medium weapon, so you should still be able to use it as a half length. It's not a long bow, so you should be okay. That hits. And so, since I have ally nearby, huh, I can do sneak attack with that. Yep. Oh yeah, because you'd be focused on hit on your monk, on the monk. Fifteen damage. Oh yeah, he's he's looking pretty tore up. Uh he's extremely bloody and uh kinda spitting and making all sorts of disgusting sounds. All right, and so then now it's um, Mente's turn. The blessing of the force does it add one to the attack roll or one to the damage roll? One to the attack and the damage roll. So then it'll be sixteen. Yeah, the blessing is on his uh, short sword or his scimitar. Oh, yeah. His on his right here, yeah. That's why I was gonna put it on your fist if he if we need to get a pair of brass knuckles next. I uh make level my unarmed strikes count as magical weapons. What's her foot is it damn she's only thirty? That sucks. Okay. So, because she can't get any closer, she's going to do her crossbow at that one. Because might as well. Yeah, because she was right next to me, right? It's 30 feet. Mo, when you get a chance, will you shoot that dude with spikes and then crossbow bolt for me at least? So 18 plus 5 is a 23, so that definitely hits. Now it's a 1d8 plus 2. So 4 plus 2 is 6 damage. So that's 6 damage to that creature. And the crossbow bolt pierces through the creature and shuts its mouth as it collapses over death. So with that being said, it does its first death saving, its first death throw. 
Right, do, do the creatures do death throws? Saving throws? Yeah. What's your call? I usually let bosses do death saving throws, but not minions. Okay. Anyways, it wouldn't it wouldn't have been enough if I did if it counted. <laughs> Alright, so he's dead, so now it goes to demon two. It's here. So he's gonna go one, two, since you just killed his friend. And he's gonna fight you that that much movement. Yes, he does. All right, so he's gonna try to bite you. All his fury. Does a twelve hit, your monk? So as he snaps at you, he misses. Kind of dodge out of his way as he snaps at your kneecaps. That's his turn. Back Mentor, and he just killed his friend. Not touch Mente. Now it's the Spike Monster's turn. Uh oh. It's just gonna kind of turn around. Take a step forward. He is going. <clears throat> He's gonna try to bite you and stab at you with his pitchfork. So that where to go? Where to go? Does a nineteen hit you? Yeah. Okay, and. Does a 13 hit you? Does not. Okay. So the 19 gives us one. Five damage. And now it is a uh, Murnax turn. Spike dude, is it metal or stone pitchfork? Doesn't say it just says a four. Because if it's metal, I'm casting heat metal. It doesn't say. Your call. I mean, it can be metal. Okay, then I'll cast it doesn't. Say, it doesn't say on it, so. Because if not, I'm just gonna bull rush because you're right beside the monk. So. Roll a d. Uh, I'll roll a d20. If you roll a d20, low it's metal, high it's not. Sure. Oh, we'll do it that way. That here. I rolled a sixteen. So it's not metal. Okay. I did it out there so you guys could see it. 
That's fine. So if uh, I move there, then I'll take the bull rush and do this. So you're gonna brush him. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta go back. And that is, is that B or C? That's two. Two. Okay. Oh, my God. Uh, 11 on my strength. Hey, you rolled a 20. Okay. That's fine. So you don't knock him over? Nope, I just wanted to make sure I got into combat. So I will occupy the square in front of him. Yep. He's a little too fat for you to move. So you're a stout dwarf. You don't have a ranged weapon? No, I didn't grab one of the crossbows. But I'll make sure I put one in my bag this time. You silly person. Yeah, I didn't think about it. Alright, um... So... He goes up in flames and disappears. Now we're back at the top, so Banzan's turn. Yep. The the one that was dead. Uh, this one gets an attack of opportunity on you. Don't so, worry about it. Oh, demon. I can get around. You well, want to stay I here. mean, in other ways, I'll just go to the right and go around. And he, he still will get one. It doesn't matter. Well, no, if you stay still in the same spot, I can go around the top. Okay. Rolled a nat 20. Actually, I'm going to actually just go right here. <laughs> oh, yeah, you didn't move, so it didn't matter. Yeah, she didn't move. You don't move out of, yeah. On the spiky boy? Yeah. That hits. That's seven damage. saving throw or fall prone. The uh, gotta be a fifteen. A spike? Yeah. Dex saving. He rolled a fourteen. Him, then he falls prone. So the the spiky boy's prone. Yes, yeah, spiky boy's prone. Give him one of them pops. And then um, I'm gonna use my free uh, unarmed attack. Fat 
that flurry of blows because I'm not really seeing it from here. Oh, I didn't mind it on him. I thought I might have drawn his head. And that's a only a 10 to hit, Spike Lee. I mean, Fat Boy. You only hit, rolled a 10? Yeah. Does not hit. Okay. Stop taking it up. It was on his head. Why did it fall off? There, there we go. Perfect. Alright, and so now it's, um, Prime's turn. Uh, bone attack, disengage. You don't need to disengage. <laughs> if I want to move to that square. I guess I just. Where are you trying to go? Right here? Yes. Because I guess I just want to move to here. Or here. Oh, you'd go. Oh, no, I have to because this guy's here. So, yeah. I have to just move to here. So that's just my bonus. Attack this guy, right? Yep. Okay. My scimitar. Yep. Which is plus one. So. Fifteen. That hits. Or rage blow. It hits. Crit chase. And you also get to roll a d4 and add that to your chances of hitting. Huh? He already hit with the first one, so. He was just fishing for a crit. Yeah, he was just fishing for a crit. So, seven damage. Okay. <clears throat> so Mente is going to take place, attack that one there. So she has oh, that's right, she doesn't have a shield. She's two two weapons. So she has her long sword and short sword out. I know. She's two handing her long sword? No. I didn't equip her other weapon on accident. It's okay. She has two short swords as well as a long sword. So she, that way she can dual wield. Mm -hmm. She's just going to use her, she's just going to do her long sword attack twice. That's, that's plenty. Because she wants to do more damage. So yeah, yeah, I guess you will uh, two-hand it. That's a 21 to hit. And that's 20. So she hits with both of them. So it's 1d10 plus 4.
First one did 13. And the second one did 12. So real good damage there on that one. It's 25 points of damage. So just so you guys know where you're sitting, um, you have Mr. Uh, boy right here is as healthy as an ox, but these two are spitting up blood and kind of healing over. Looking like they've definitely had better days. <clears throat> oh, and it's uh, their turns now. Right, go this way. So, go. so it's his turn, and you ran into him, tried to shoulder check him. He didn't like that. So he's going to swing at you. His bite. And that's a uh, 19 to hit. Mm -hmm. Nin yeah, 19 gets me. Sixteen damage. His bite. Holy shit. Oh my god. Kyle, hold your leg and try to rip it off. And then that's his turn. Gonna turn towards the huh? stand up. What's up? Stands up so he's no longer prone. And he is going to Oh wait, oops, it's his turn first. So he's going to attack at Mente. He swung a shit. A dirty 20. So he definitely hits. So that is crap. Fifteen points of damage to Mente. These guys are hitting hard. And Spike Boy st stands up and then swings at Banzan. It is so first he tries to uh, fight and poke you with his pitchfork. So two on the bite. Pretty sure that doesn't hit. Mm. And a seventeen with the pitchfork is a seventeen hit. Six points of damage. It's piercing damage. And 
and now it's uh our next turn. First action is gonna be prior of healing. Everybody gains eight hit points. Is there a radius on that or no? Um, six targets of my choice within 40 feet of me. Okay. <laughs> Is it eight? Eight, yep. Okay. And then for my bonus action, I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on myself. Okay. That being said, back to the top. Nine. Nine total? Yeah, I got that. That, do, that does not hit. Punch down. Your, your elbow bounces off of his fat flubber. You didn't get enough force behind it. Taking the turn. You only get one action? Yep, I have to heal with my unarmed strike. Do you do anything else? Alright, so now that's uh, Moe's turn. What's that? I have I have abandoned, so I get a little slack. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah. No, it's not the turn. It's the eight. <laughs> <laughs> and Mo, when you attack with your rapier, you get to roll a D four to your turn for hitting. Yeah, so to add to whatever you want. Side advantage. So does sixteen hit? Yes. How do you kill him? So he's supposed to have wings too, just so you know. He has wings too, just the figure doesn't have it. So you just kind of run him through with your rapier. All right. And then I'm going to try to move.
And so it's my turn. Mente's turn. All right, so Mente is gonna just go right into two handing that long sword. With advantage. She doesn't. So I'll throw again for crit chasing just cause. Happen. So ten plus four. How are you fucking kidding me? Alright, so she does seven damage with her first attack. And then with her second attack, she slices it clean in half through its open jowls, causing it to split in two. So. <laughs> he is dead. And she's going to there. And it is uh this one's turn. And because he is very angry that his friend just got killed, he's going to attack Mente. That's fine. You can react to that. I'm going to take my attack of opportunity. Okay. Attack of opportunity. Thank you. This is an attack on Mente, anyways. How'd you do? Eight. Yeah, yeah. You're not hit. This is the elusive one. And it, uh... Becomes your turn. Burnack. Um, bonus action, I'm gonna cast Enchanter Searing Smite. And then I'm gonna attack that guy. What does Searing Smite do? I don't have to look that up. Next time I would hit with my weapon, I get to add 1d6 points of damage. If I hit with him, I catch it on fire. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Nope. No what? Trouble. Damn it. Fuck you. This, dude, this dude's elusive. Oh, now. Now he's back to the top. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh. I have advantage. I get to roll again. Yeah, there you go. There it is. You hit him. Yep, that hits. Nine points to damage. Yeah, that's with your regular attack, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then how much damage does the fire do? No, nine total. Six six for regular, three for fire. Okay, well, because he's uh, resistant to fire, so it's only halved. Okay. On a cast uh, spell. So it's eight total. Yeah. Okay. Then it's got to make a constitution saving throw of 12. Okay. It did not... He on fire. Yeah, he's on fire. Okay. 
So that would be this one. And then at the start of his turn, before it does every, anything, it's got to make a saving throw, a constitute saving throw of 12, or it gets another d6 points of fire damage. Okay. So it's guaranteed to at least do one point of damage to him on his turn. It's back to you, Van Van. What happened? He's burning. Yep, burning. It's on fire. Burning. Sixteen to hit. That hits. Damage. Rick. Wrecks him. What happened? He I just crit. My Nick crit. Jack just crit him. Perfect. Okay. And then nineteen for my second punch. Okay, and so how do you kill? No, that was just a hit the second one, not the other. Oh, nineteen hits, yes. And it's still a total of fourteen damage right there. Fourteen damage? <clears throat> 21 damage from all three, three strikes. Okay. Yes, so you don't quite kill him. But he's pretty uh, badly jacked up. Yeah, I don't see him making it to the next of you, my sir. Alright, so then it is... Uh, It is Rogue's turn. So I'm grabbing a couple of things here. Yep. What'd you say? Sorry, I was grabbing a couple of things. Oh, okay. The core things I was trying to bring over here. Twenty six will hit. And seven. And how do you kill him? Nice. So your uh, rapier slashes through him right here, as you can see, you know, burning thing. It's going to cut through him right here, taking, dissecting this arm off and cutting half his face, or half his mouth away on the one side as it falls to the floor. He, uh, he starts to melt away and then bursts into flames. Appears. And so, that being said, 
Gia's want to make an insight check to see if you figured out what kind of creatures those were. Not tell. One. Eighteen. All right. So, based on your travels, you have both heard of um, various fiends and demon spawn. Uh, referred to as Maws, that is represented that roughly similar to looked similar to what you had heard about before. So you fought. So these were Maw demons and a spined devil, and it obviously looked like demons worshipped the devil, even though. From your knowledge, the spine devils are not anything significant. So there's two chests in this room. You guys can search, inspect. Do a uh, um, investigation check. Ten. No. Oh, zero. That didn't sound good. He threw it off the table. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Natural twenty. Oh, nice. Yep. So as you investigate it, it looks like just a wooden chest uh, with a standard lock that happens to not be locked at all. Um, Pop that boy open. And is just kind of there. I'm going to do a investigation on mine. Eighteen. Yeah. Same thing. There's you. You notice that it's just a standard wooden chest with a lock on it. Um, that you know, there is dusty and dirty and <clears throat> doesn't really have. Uh, that's old brain. Just pop these chests open. All right. So as you open the chests, it's a mimic. You would have <laughs> detected that through investigation. Yep, you would have. <laughs> that's why I always started poking chests with swords every time we walked up to them. So. Trying to find stuff, so just keep saying. you will. Or you can smoke a couple times and be like, yeah. Yeah. Nope. I want the deck of many things. Let's do this. <laughs> Go pull it up around. <laughs> yeah. We'll just take turns drawing cards. 
That's what we'll do. We'll get a deck of many things, and if you fumble, you got to pull a card. I love playing with crit and fumble tables. It's one of my favorite things. Uh, I've got the cards for mine. I was trying to see. I'm surprised they don't actually have brass knuckles as a weapon. What kind of armor do you wear? Zan Zan? Uh, None? None at all. I may have been armored once with my robes. I'm not, I'm failing here with these searches of things. I'm trying to find something for you guys, and as I search, I don't see shit. <laughs> Start off. Well, I was looking, I was trying to find, like, um, I was looking for magical items, but I was just kind of looking to see what they are, like, what they have, like, if there's anything that. I got it in my head, and then just tell me what you want. Well, I was trying, to, I was looking for, like, a crossbow. It was going to be in Burnak's cape chest over there. Just like a... Yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do. There's, so there's a plus one crossbow. There's a um, set of, there's a what's that? Is it a light crossbow or a hand? A uh, light crossbow. And then the regions over here. And yeah, we're just gonna home with some shit. Talk in my language. So you're gonna there's in this chest. That you looked in, Van Zan. There's a set of punk robes that give you plus one to your armor, plus one defense, or plus one to your AC. Beautiful. So you add one to your AC. Um, Do you guys mind if I take these? Hey. In this one, there is a um, rapier. That is a pl that gives you plus one, as well as a crossbow that gives you plus one. I got the rapier. I'll give you the crossbow as well.
have all the loot so we can go tell them Mente Fava we're done. Yeah, that looks like that's gonna be all that's in here. So we uh now know that we have Yeah. Well, so there should be a rapier plus one. So if you go to equipment. I, would, I guess we're going to need a rapier, yeah. And there should be a crossbow one too, right? I was looking at the crossbow and I didn't find one. Okay, yeah. So yeah, so the crossbow, you probably just make a note. So what you can do also is you can you can um, make your homebrewed weapon, and oh, now I see it. and when you do the custom weapon, it you just have to say that it has a permanent stat of plus one. So small. <laughs> well, they all look so small now. I know. <laughs> all right. All right. So as you come back to the camp, um, Sir Roger, thanks you guys for your efforts, and says I, that he hopes you found some things of note that were worthwhile, and he also hands you each a bag of 50 gold for your troubles. says don't worry this is not payment for what for it this does not come from any of the payment that you're already going to be receiving from doing helping take back the estate this is strictly for clearing out the old mill and saving it for so we have it for our future for the future when we need it we need to take everything back says we will go ahead and rest for the night our friends come back we'll make you guys will make way towards the estate uh, when you have your full party Van Van do you want me to make you a pair of brass knuckles so you level up yeah sure before we go to bed, I will snag one of the scimitars we have. And so, what's your what's your brass knuckles um, right now, or what, what, what's your what's your attack right now? What do you mean? Just the damage for my attack? Like, well, what's your like? Just my fist. I'm gonna, strike, I'm, 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 I'm gonna look. One d four plus three. Oh, 
one d four plus three. Yeah. Okay, so um, brass knuckles would be um one one d six plus the three. Um. How much do brass knuckles cost equipment wise? Do you know? Brass knuckles would be equal to like one iron bar. So it'd be it would, it would take a whole like a whole like blade. No, I was just I uh in gold value. In gold value? I don't know. Yeah. But fifteen gold. Okay. I mean were, gold. Yeah, I mean I mean don't, don't don't put any gold value on it. Just put that you made brass knuckles. I I know, but I'm gonna use. Cause I gotta I have to use the know how much it costs. I can only make a hundred golds worth of stuff out of it. So it can't cost more than a hundred gold. Yeah, you, you, it'll it will just assume it'll consume the whole scimitar. I mean, if you got a hundred and. 50 silver pieces, I'll make you silver brass knuckles. Or you could just make, make it. Handy down the road. Make iron ones, yeah. <laughs> it will. Or it I, will. Or I, <laughs> yeah, make, I have uh, 102 gold. You should have more than that. What did I tell you guys to start with? Oh, you know, it's 50, then you did two from your backstory, so yeah. Yeah, and then we just got 50. So yeah, so you just got another 50. You, you guys will get more, don't worry. You're not going to be gold poor. I'll make, use my Camel Divinity Artisan's Blessing, and I'll make you silver brass knuckles. Beautiful. I'll take off uh, 15 gold, and I think that... Yeah, one gold is six silver pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll cover. I'll cover half of it. I'll split no, it with I you. Got it. You're the crafter. I'll take the material. So I'm removing the fifteen gold. Okay. And now I can use bless on you, and I can bless your weapons and stuff. Okay, you said I'm gonna make you seven gold now. Now, did we complete our, our long rest for the night? Or should I not hit the button yet? Oh, yeah, no, you're going to be good. Okay, I'm going to set my long rest on that. We cover my two hit points. <laughs> yeah, I think we're done for the night, Mo. It's a little quick, a little quickie. Long rest of wrestling. So at least we did something. You guys got something out of it. Like I can give you guys gold like that. Oh, cool. <laughs> Should I put it in your tent? Everyone goes in home, their homes for the night. Hey, you you took my tent. <laughs> and Daisy's going to bed. What 
the roof go? What? He's, old, he's like, I'm out. What's talking about? I don't know where you guys built my room. I built my bed in there. Yo, I'm trying to steal the. Trying to s steal. I think the rogue stole some gold. The gold. I don't even know where he's at. I don't even see him. Hold on, where's my guys? Your guys are in the tank because you have the tent locked. No, I don't see mine. Okay, your guys are in your tent too. So go ahead. The tent's not locked. Yeah, but your people are inside the tent. Yeah, I don't know why it's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Gold thieves around here. Can't do it without me as well as with you. Move my tent over here to this side. All right. So we'll do the one that I worked up all crazy next time. Oh, but I have to make a new, another side mission because Bernat can't be here next week. I think Murnak's gonna find a way. Yeah, Murnak will find a way. He's gonna fight through whole tired. Murnak's gonna be like, fuck that, we're killing this fucking big bad. <coughs> so that actually went a lot smoother than I thought it was going to. Fighting those guys. Well after action report. Well I I screwed up some of my roles. I completely forgot about the abilities and feats I have. Well, I didn't use all those enemies' abilities, to be fair. Well, shit, yeah, if they would have hit me a bit more, then yeah, it would have been really tough. Because the Maw Demon has an ability where, like, he shoots poison in a fucking cone <laughs> for 25 feet. Rolling really well for them. Yeah. I rolled fucking crazy good. Yeah, I was like... I was like, dude, what the hell is going on here? And Mo had me all screwed up. I was like, how was he rolling his dice like that? But I finally figured it out. How is that? What? How you're rolling your dice? I was like, man, how's he throwing his dice up in the air? I was oh. like, I'm to be 20s on the floor trying to figure it out. Like this? That's why I, uh, I said in the first game, uh, R. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how is this? I'm over here going like this, tossing them. Like, oh, I'm, I, I, I do this every time. I find it more fun. I just don't like it that way because uh, then you have to watch where you're rolling. Well, I end up throwing it over. Well, I, I have a big open area over here. That's why. So it doesn't really matter. Oh, 
Like, I literally, like, there was one time where I threw it, and it went from, here, let me show you guys. It won't let me make you, it won't let me let you guys be black. No, it don't matter. Okay, so, but like, so, essentially, on my board, I have, like, where the dice thing is right here, I threw it, and it rolled across all the freaking data pads, everything, pretty much all the way over here one time. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell? So I threw it a little too hard. Know about that roll thing? You do know how to just get your dice all together, right? Yeah. Pull, pulling them all together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I knew how to pull them all together. I just wish I could delete my dice. Dice, do you want deleted? Oh, no, my. I, I don't pull any extra dice out. Dice out now. So it's like, nope. All right. Since the big bird, uh. Where'd Banzan's figure go? What? Banzan's figure. I think the rogue kidnapped him. <laughs> did you see, you see what I did to Gray's figure? No. Oh yeah, Ben's ass figures in here. Be Gray's figure. Put a tombstone on him. I flipped it upside down and named it Grayson. He died. I've never even met this guy. Oh, that, that squirrel's guy. He hasn't shown up yet. There's like the fire though. Look at the fire actually has is like animated. Yeah. I was looking at that. The fire looks cool. This this is the one I got ready. All right, buddy. Oh, those fires are cool too. Thanks for coming. Have a good night. Yes, I could put. I could have put this on him. To show he was burning. Stop. Oh, that's a cool fire there too. 